On this episode of Flying Sparks Garage, we finally get the hang, mostly, of doing a wrap on our C6 Corvette. We are so excited for y'all to see this episode. About a month ago, we decided we were gonna take this car across the country from Texas to California for Hot Rod Power Tour West. But we didn't wanna take it the way it looked before because it had some really, really bad bodywork. I was mostly concerned about the bumper falling off going down the road, I mean, I didn't really care how it looked, kind of. I mean, it was but. held on by deck screws. That's yeah. quality uh, engineering there. Yeah. Yeah, so we went through a lot with this uh, car, and we are so excited to show you guys how we transformed it after a lot of agony. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Let's get to it. Hello, sir. Is it time to work? Yes. All right, well, let's get to work. And we have the shop dog here. Finley? Yep. Is it time? I, th I think it is. Um, we have some green pieces on this car. We like the piece in the back better than we do this here piece, but we're learning. And that's the price of learning. I think we're gonna do this driver door though, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, we're gonna try to do it without getting dust in it and without getting glue lines. So we got it about 70 degrees here in the shop. Some of you guys suggested that I use tack cloth, which I actually had bought some before we started this. So I think I'll go ahead and use it. And we're gonna try to lay some stuff down. We just ordered another roll of that stuff because I was stressing out like we're wasting material and I decided, you know what? Education, let's just get another roll in here and not be afraid to slap it on and pull it back off. So that's what today's about. Let's just put it on there, see how good we can do. If it doesn't look good, we'll pull it back off. Sounds like a plan to me. Tack cloth time. Yep. Time to get tacky. I cleaned it with denatured alcohol a couple times. Cleaned the door jam to make sure nothing was loose in there that was going to fall out. And now we're going to tack it. Then we'll get the vinyl over here and probably tack it again. I just want to see what shows up on here because this is probably what's ended up in our wrap. All your repairs look really pretty on that door. Thank you. It's so crazy how the fender would hit the door every time you'd open it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just chipping away at it. So sad. The heater's turned off. That's tacked. Let's get some vinyl out and see what we can do. This wrap is really incredible because one of the technologies it has is air release. So if you have a bubble, you just slowly work that bubble down and the air is able to escape from the material. The air doesn't get caught underneath. When you see it, you think there's gonna be too much material there and the bubble won't go down, but it, it did. That's something I wanna show y'all, shoot some detail on. That bubble in the center, it creeps me out, but Evidently, it can release and be good. Hey, bud. What are you doing? He just slowly works these bubbles back and forth with his fingertip. It is so interesting how they just dissolve. The air was able to push out and it's slick. There were like a handful of bubbles in this section right here. And they're gone. So it's interesting. We've still got this nice hefty wrinkle here. And we don't know if that's going to work out, but we shall see. Yeah, the main thing you don't want to do is how we've got a corner here. If you push that too hard too fast, it'll wrinkle. It'll like bunch up. That creates glue lines. That creates imperfections in it. So I'm just filling with my finger. And if I feel anything rigid, I back off and massage it a little bit more. That's a big bubble, but it'll come out. So this is what happens if you push too hard. Once I realized we aren't going to be able to save the panel, I, I pushed in there real hard just to look at it. That's what it does. But if you go lightly, it'll work out. But if I go in here and, and really push quick, it's going to make one of those. The 
this door was much easier the second go around. We were really intentional about not letting it accidentally stick and it looks really good. Of course, that's where the side mirror mounts. He's working on this difficult portion up here. This door's clear. Yep, it clears. Yeah! It's time to get to work. It is Saturday morning and we're still working. Like I expected, we're gonna be working through the weekend. That's okay, because we're having fun. I'm gonna work on these fenders. Uh, this one is most important because we still have a gap here. So I'm gonna build that back up a little bit, trim this down a little bit, try to get everything right. And then Emily's gonna work on the door jams and try to make that green. Because when you open the door, and it's silver and it's over sprayed. It's just, we've gone to so much work, we might as well go to a little bit more work to make it all kind of tie in. Would you like to address the people? I'm just excited to continue seeing more green. Yeah. It's gonna be really cool. When I open this door, I have part of the door jam done and it already just looks so nice. And the door jams were something that bugged me prior to this. Like they didn't do, as we know, any prep work. Like there was just overspray and bad body work and it was all cakey and rough. Like not how a Corvette should be. So I've already got this looking halfway decent. So I'm like, I'm keeping keeping the pace there. So we're excited. It's gonna That's be awesome. right. Yep. That was my address to the people. <laughs> yeah, you can see how we really want that to be green as well. Yep. All this. And we got new sill plates out yep. there where hand is. I already pulled that one off. We'll show you guys pulling the other one off. I clean that sticky off and then make her green. It's gonna be good. If you guys have never painted a car to prevent this nastiness, all this overspray, it's just awful. Uh, they sell, it's foam, it's about that big, about half inch, and it's sticky. So stick it to here, shut your door, and there will be a little bit sticking out and it'll make you a perfect clean line. So you got new paint on the outside and no overspray on the inside. You can also take a piece of masking tape and just fold it like a U, stick it on one side and have it kind of humped up close your door and it does the same thing but it's not quite as accurate as as buying the correct stuff but we all have access to amazon now and you might as well get what's right for the job because you're filming this so much i want to say this whole seam situation here and where this doesn't meet up 
all this is going to be covered by one of those little plastic black pieces. It like finishes it off really nicely. So I wasn't stressing about having a seam there and having that not meet up because that's all covered. We did this before we learned about the inlay. We could have just put some of that cutting tape right yep. there. Yep. Inlaid a new piece and this whole thing wouldn't have been stretched and forced in there yeah. with heat. So true, true, true. You know, just learn as we go. Exactly. We only have one camera. We've they, got they'd many probably rather cameras. see you. <laughs> I'll put the phone time lapsing me and you can have the big camera. Or on vice me. versa. <laughs> Alright, we're getting to work guys. got a uh, scrap piece that I'm using and it's a pretty ugly piece it's actually got a fair amount of trash in it <laughs> but I kind of like started playing with it to see what pieces I wanted to like inlay I've already got my red tape here because I didn't want to have to try and do like a, a curve on this part so I've got red tape there I don't know I'm just kind of playing right now I might just leave this piece on here but it's got a fair amount of trash in it, which I don't love, but at the same time, this isn't the most important part of the job, so I'm trying not to judge it that much. But I'm about to get the heat going to curve this around this part and keep on playing with it. <laughs> it's going on. <laughs> okay, I have a piece of my door jam ready. Um, I said that with a question mark because I kind of used a scrap piece and I sort of started it just to see how it was going to lay and then once it was laying decent I was like I don't want to take this back off so I think I'm going to kind of just deal with the trash and imperfections on it. It was only this long so I'm going to have a seam between the door sill the Corvette sill plate. I'm not hating it. I've got my tape here so I'm going to pull that up so that I have some nice seams and then I've got a, a piece to go here and a piece to go there. But let's peel this tape off and see how it goes this time. Because last time it was a wee bit tricky. Okay, this one started off much nicer. It's really important when you cut that little piece of tape up to the string that you hold down the other piece of tape that you slice so that it stays sturdy and doesn't want to try and pull the whole thing up. And that's what I did this time and it worked really well. Let's get it going. Then I'll do a seam with the next piece that I go over across and I'll put another piece of tape over on the green on the vinyl so that I have a nice little overlapping seam. Holding my tape and my starting point and we're off. Really tricky over in this area not to have any wrinkles against that red tape. If you have wrinkles and it's going to catch and not cut straight, I think. Oh, I'm pulling my red tape and my excess off at the same time. And this looks okay. Pretty dang good. <laughs> oh, that looks nice, y'all. And then this thing's kind of tricky. That's gonna go under. What a weird day it was in the shop for us. We really didn't get started until after lunch and Aaron hyper-focused on the driver's side fender and I hyper-focused on the passenger side door jam. And that's all we got done. And it's like yeah. seven o'clock now. It's eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock now. We haven't had dinner yet, of course, and we're pooped. And I mean, I felt like I did a decent job on that door jam, but I patched it together with spare pieces that I didn't want to see go to waste. So it's pretty funny. But Aaron's fender looks so good with the fitment with the bumper. It is just super sexy. He worked so hard on it. And you know what? Progress is progress. Yep. Even though it was like weird and minimal today, 
Well, we were doing some of the harder jobs, so you know what? Stick in there till it's done. That's right. Little by little, we'll get there. It's um, currently Saturday. We're gonna work through the weekend and um, Thursday we leave for PRI. So we have, you know, some days to work on her and get her all gussied up. And then it'll be time to go to Indy for a minute and then time to hit the road for California. It's gonna be awesome. See y'all soon. It's a new day. Mom is using us for our coffee machine. She's gonna go to Canton Flea Market today with the girls. But look, she and I are matching. We're both wearing our flannels and our flying sparks tanks. How cute is that? I saw a comment on the last Corvette episode, Mom, that was like, hey, great episode, where's Mom? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like to be loved. <laughs> so here's mom. It's gonna be a fun day. Yes. We're gonna get more vet progress. Erin was just showing her the wheel that we got in. It's it's insane how wide okay. these wheels are on this car. It's like, uh -huh. what the heck? Just as I was rolling camera, she had explo explo exploit. What's that word that says cuss words? Right when I started rolling, you were like, holy sh I did not. Holy explits. Explicit? Exploits. No. Exploits. Expletive. She was I surprised. I didn't say that word. Holy sh She was surprised at the size of the wheel. Aaron was glad about that. Yep. But yes, this car is getting more and more green the more work we do. Oh my gosh, y'all. Did you show them the door jam? It's a new day and same old Shh. stuff. I'm embarrassed to say I spent like five hours on just this area yesterday. I worked it and worked it and worked it. Finally got frustrated, chipped everything out I had done because it was starting to separate. Whatever coating they had on the fender was not agreeing with my my repair. So chipped it all out, started over. Finally, about 7.30 last night, I got it to where everything fit. And so I just put this glazing putty on here. Again, this is the stuff that just goes on the surface. It basically is there to remove tiny imperfections. You're not gonna have a bunch of this left when I get done. So I'm just gonna get back to work finish sanding on this. The other side fits pretty good. I'm going to glaze that one as well, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Emily's going to get on those door jams and we're just going to hustle. It's Sunday. We're trying to catch up. So we can leave on this trip without any stress. We don't want to be in here until midnight the night before we leave. So here we go. You helping Finley? He's got Sunday right. Naps. It's looking better. I am stuffing this wine of material down behind this rubber and then I'll pull my tape off here and have a line. I already have this piece on. This looks janky but it's all the silver is covered. <laughs> cutting through this to get the cutting through my material to get this out it was very difficult and so I have some patch panels there. Three of them to be exact. I don't know if y'all can see them but I see them and they're very they're great. Um, I'm gonna get this down and then I'm gonna go with this face right here and then I'll be attacking these two. I already have my tape here because I'm gonna do one small piece there and then one piece there and I'm gonna trim all this up and make it nice. <sighs> Six hours later you can come check on me. Right. I'm not even filming this because I'm just like incessantly cussing. She gets it from her mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right y'all this is exciting. I'm going to install this sill plate. We ordered these and I think Aaron said that they're OEM. I think that the chrome comes off. I think that's the sticky part. I'm a little nervous to do this without Aaron. He had to run. So I am really wanting to wrap this door jam project. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to stress about it. I don't know what is the proper prep to stick something to wrap. Obviously, I'm not gonna run denatured alcohol or anything like that, right? I guess the chrome stays. I was hoping the chrome didn't stay, but maybe I'll like it once it's down. I just like seeing the color in the Corvette, but it does not look like it comes off. So, okay, we're embracing chrome. Chrome don't get you home. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> Because I didn't clean off all of the residue from the last one, I have a perfect place of knowing where it goes, so that's nice. <laughs> I 
It's on there. <laughs> oh dear. That's pretty snazzy. Okay. I've got to reinstall the little door handle situation guy. I finished this door jam. Check it out. Door jam. Door jam. Oh, awesome. I got the seam on this door really good. At least, I feel like it's pretty good. I cleaned up this inner edge and then I did a piece here and then I put my wrap cut tape um, all along this edge right here. I just laid right on the edge. I got my tape there. This section didn't matter because the handle's going over it, but I still got it really nice. And then I came down the side of the door. I do not know if that's how the professionals would have done it. I just didn't like how there was the edge right here and then coming around the door it wanted to crinkle a lot so that's just the way it made sense to me hopefully it ages well that way it's gonna do what it's gonna do let's get this plug back in and snapped into place for her door handle to work i've got my holes for my screw there why don't you go Ooh, that corner right there up with that. It really works good. Anytime you have a, a crinkle that you may not like so much, you can put a little heat to it and it and almost kind of self heals. It just kind of like makes it soft enough and pliable enough to press it out. I don't like the way my screw heads are gray and this is so nice and black. I like want to paint my screw heads. Silly. I tried to use mineral spirits and then thinner to get the overspray off. Erin came over here. I was getting nervous on this on this rubber because it started getting soft and gummy using the thinner. I googled how do you get overspray off of rubber and the internet said thinner so I was using thinner but it started getting gummy and I was kind of like babe what do I do? What do you think I should do? And he came over here with um, a scotch bright and um, a rag with thinner on it and he got it off of this rubber pretty much there's still a little bit but then he said just use the thinner on this and I was using the thinner on it but it just got I didn't like it it got too soft and gummy kind of feeling again so then I just um, wet sanded it I let it kind of dry and then it kind of got firm again so then I wet sanded it and I took it outside and I just sprayed it with matte paint so i didn't fully get all of the silver paint off of it but i didn't like any of the harsh chemicals on this plastic so if anybody has a good suggestion of a product that gets paint off of plastic without harming the plastic it'd be awesome to have that feedback but all this looks really good really happy with it i mean when i i look at it i scrutinize it because i know like I had to do various patches and I didn't use any of like the brand new wrap on this these sections because I just wanted to utilize like scrap pieces. I've used all of them but like pieces like this that we had I'm like I used them all you know on like scrap areas where it required smaller pieces or like these pieces. There's a seam here and there's a seam. This is one piece. This is one piece. Here's a seam. So this is three pieces. One, two, three. And I, I don't love that, but at the same time, I, I like that I was able to utilize scrap pieces. And they don't look too bad. There's, there's some trash and junk in them, but I'm trying not to stress about it. It looks good. You open the door, it's all green and uniform. So I'm calling that a win. Okay, Finn. You ready to move to the other side? You ready? You want this? Get ready. Get it, bud. Mm, mm, mm. There's our pretty edge. Now we'll take our red tape out from that line. 
And I like to use a little bit of heat just to kind of make that edge a little bit softer and it lays smoother. And if I treat her right, that seam just disappears. Progress, progress. Got that little section done. And this little section done. I'm just gonna piece it all together. <laughs> it's like nine o'clock. Yep. Aaron just got home and, or back to the shop. And um, I still don't have that door jam done. I worked a long time on it. Mom sat over here and chatted with me while I worked on it. And I'm about three quarters of the way done, but not quite finished yet. And I'm gonna get up and go to the gym in the morning and then run to Dallas and get a bunch of those components that we need to mount the bumper and the fenders. Mostly the bumper, right? Yeah, it's basically the inner skeleton of the bumper. It's what keeps it from flapping in the wind and kind of lines things up. And yeah, we're gonna buy whatever they have. You know, this stuff's getting harder to find. So hopefully we at least get the front pieces that'll keep it in there, you know. Sturdy. Yeah. And yeah. what are you gonna work on in the morning? I don't know, I've got some speakers to put in the back. I may work on getting the radio and all that stuff back in there. I might pull the hood off because we're gonna replace the water pump belt, all the hoses, and replace the frame that goes underneath the radiator because it's just destroyed. So I may start on that stuff. I don't know, we'll see. Okay. I could use a day away from body work though, you know, doing something where it's just like, take it apart and put it back together. Nuts and bolts. Not re-engineer and redesign it. So <laughs> exactly. we'll see. Cool. Well, we will see y'all tomorrow for more progress. I never blow kisses, that's random. That's a new day. Emily's at the gym right now and she's gonna get back here, drop the Nova off, jump in the Bronco, and she's heading to Dallas. She's gonna pick up all the inner fender liners for the front that are not back ordered. So I believe we can get the two front pieces, which is the internal skeleton of that. That's what holds everything in place. So she's gonna go do that. And I decided I'm tired of body work. I'm gonna jump on to mechanical stuff. So probably what I'll do is I'll pull the fenders off, pull the front bumper off. I might pull the hood off, we'll see. Um, I hate to do that because it kind of messes up the alignment. Yeah, I, I'm gonna film some of it. And some of it I'm just gonna put my head down and work. We gotta remove that cage from the bottom of the radiator. Uh, I guess you call it a core support. It's been hit really hard. So it's jacked up. We're gonna replace that. And we're also putting these cool little wheels on it. They look like skateboarding wheels. And that'll help us when we go through low dips. It'll push up on that frame part instead of on the front fascia. So I'm gonna work on that. I've already put the speakers in the back. I didn't film that because I was kind of up there and in a tight spot. It doesn't sound any better. We've got an issue with like the amp not producing enough power or something. There's a little bit of static in it. So we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna move on. If we have to, we'll throw our earbuds in and if we got the top off. But yeah, let's get some mechanical stuff done because we want the car to look good, but most importantly, we want it to be reliable. So I'm gonna get on that, knock it out today. And we have three more days before we head to Indy. And then as soon as we get back from that, we're going to Vegas. Well, LA, then Vegas. But yeah, let's get some work done. All right, now at least we're not gonna damage the work we've already done. So if we get stuff greasy, we drop a wrench or something like that, we know that our body panels are protected. So I'm just gonna get in there and start taking parts off. Yeah, pulled the radiator out. That wasn't too hard. Now we can get down to more of this stuff, get that water pump off. Look at the core support. It is completely crooked. This is out probably three inches from that. You can see there how bent over it is. I tried to weld it back together. Oh, it looks like we've got three bolts over here, three bolts over here and then we gotta remove the belt tensioner. If you guys are doing a job for the first time and you don't have a book and you don't have resources, just pull the new part out and you can see exactly where the bolts are because when I'm looking down in here, I can't tell what's bolted to the water pump, what's bolted to the head. So, but I can look right here and be like, all right, cool. Three bolts, three bolts, get those out. Water pump should be loose. So just if you're working on something that's kind of weird, maybe you don't have a way of looking at a schematic, that's easy enough. I'm gonna pull that off, probably not gonna film it because it's, it's just work. 
We are so close to that camshaft right now. It takes all of my self-control not to run the summit right now, get a bump stick, throw it in there, but I'm just gonna put it back together. Ah, it's so tempting. So initially looking at that, that just looked like a mess. But really, it was just a few bolts. I didn't have to pull the radiator out. I did that because I'm replacing the core support, but I'm sure it made this job easier. Okay, I got it out. It is mangled. I had to bend it just to get it off. This was pressed all the way back here where I couldn't get to this bolt. And then of course this piece, yeah, it, just, it fell off. I'll get the new one out of the box and see if I can get it in there. I think it's because it's cheaper to ship this way. It came in three pieces. We'll put it together. Okay. The biggest difference I see is this side's got a pad for the radiator. So does that side. That side's got one. This side has this. What is this? I don't know. Well, we have a major problem. That is not going to bolt up. My mounting point's way back here. We're talking about three inches for mounting. I just got on Amazon. They've got one. It'll be here tomorrow. And I looked at the pictures. It looks like the exact one. So we're going to have to hit pause on this. It's frustrating. Check your parts when you get them in. This has been on the shelf for a while. And now I've just wasted money because I can't send it back. Okay, I'm back from the big city. Got yep. a bunch of parts that we needed. We just held them up to the various areas on the bumper that they go, and it was very exciting to see, like, I don't know, all the pieces that just, like, make it right. Yeah, we're down to the, not the wire. We're down to the last couple days of working on this, so I wanted to prioritize, make a list. First thing, <laughs> make the SLB green. That's important. We gotta finish that. I was like, what's the sob? <laughs> Make the sob green. Oh, so, SOB. Got it. We're gonna say door jams. About three quarters front done on that. Yep, front fenders, bumper hood. I was gonna put front end. Okay, so that'll. I've got that radiator sport coming in tomorrow probably be here around five. Don't really think there's any point in putting the bumper on before we get that on. We could try and wrap the fenders on the stand, which I think we should at least attempt one because we have plenty of vinyl. Um, it'd be nice to get that all wrapped around the corners and stuff. Next thing, this is actually the most important thing about the car. Our dimmer switch is bad on this car. So basically you have low lights that go to nothing or you have bright lights and you don't get to pick whenever they're on. You turn your blinker on, high beams might come on, hit a bump, they might go off, it's a problem. So I got a new switch, so we'll do that. You have to pull the steering wheel to replace that. Yeah. Ugh. Go show. Yikes. Let's just put install radiator. I got the water pump on, got the new thermostat in it, got the belt on it, so once we get the core support, we'll put that in, drop the radiator in, it should be pretty simple, and then Put all the zip ties back on it that were on it. Yeah, I was gonna say our floppy cold air intake is like. I, I removed that, we'll show you in a minute. When I say there was a long screw in this, it's the longest one I ever saw. I, I sat in there, like switched arms three or four times. This screw is like this big. Holding what on? Holding half of the air box on. They just drilled it right up through the frame. So we're gonna fix that. It shouldn't be a surprise by now. No. Okay, we have to tint tail lights. Yeah, Aaron ordered some film, some tinting film. Yeah, and, and it's it not really perfect, good. but it looks good from here and we're sitting like four feet away. So. It makes her fanny look better. Yeah. With the green, with the red shining tail lights, it's too yeah. stark. It is the holiday season, yeah, but. If you're looking at it right here, it's just in way too good of a mood, it's all like goofy and chipper. We're gonna <laughs> dim that light a little bit. <laughs> Is that how you feel about me sometimes? I'm answering that one. <laughs> okay, I got the speakers installed. They're not good. So we're gonna roll with the radio the way it is. We gotta put all that stuff back in. So interior. Guess it's just the sound of my voice you get to hear. 
Why they make noise canceling headphones? <laughs> Wheels and tires. Well, one wheel and tire. Got four new Continental DWS 06s. Yep. They're going to be awesome. What else on the car needs to be done? Uh, put the door panels no. back on. We got to wrap the mirrors. Um, fix that one mirror stud. Was that a problem or no? The one that was on that one side. It's not significant. Do we want to paint the underside of the hood black like we mentioned? It would look better. Just take it off, take it outside, tape it off. Yeah, we may do that. Yeah, because everything on the engine bay is black except for that. Yeah. I'm just going to put underside hood. Oh, check all the suspension bolts. I'm going to put it on the lift, right? And get it in the air. Yep. So check suspension bolts and the fluids. Yeah. Check transmission fluid, diff fluid. Make sure nothing's loose back there. The oil hasn't been changed that long ago, so we'll probably just roll with it. Put some fresh peak antifreeze in it after we do yeah. the coolant system yeah. stuff. Hashtag peak, peak squad. Yep. Love those guys so much. Heck yeah. Yeah. And then it'll be time to load her up and hit the road. Yep, I'm still trying to think if there's something we can remember on the car that needs to be done. <sighs> Look, there are parts. I'll probably think of five more things from junk I bought. I think that's a good start. We'll add to this list as we can. Let's get to work. Less words, more work. Amen. Wiping this fender down with the denatured alcohol. And then it's going to be time to try and lay some wrap on it. We have it clamped. To our little rack here. We're hoping that that's sturdy enough for like the pull that needs to take place. This should be done on the car. I'm just antsy and now we're waiting on parts to get the front bumper back on and all that so we're gonna go ahead and get some work done. And one of the things Aaron said is it would be really nice to have access points to all the corners of the fender yeah. to be able to loop it around which reminds me whenever i've tried to do the inside like this is really rough and yucky and it mm -hmm. doesn't want to stick so yeah. i don't know if we want to put some of that adhesion yeah um not a bad idea stuff on the inside now, there's not a lot we can do about it being rough because that's fiberglass right. it's raw fiberglass exactly and i would have to re-glass it sand it no we're not doing that no so are these the way you want them these holes i, I sanded them a bunch i don't know could I? You can do whatever you want. Well, I was going to request you do it because I'm scared to, but this one dips down right here, and then this one is pretty rough. Do you want me to take the Dremel and mess with it? No, I, I can take those little hard edges out. But See how this one, it's like a yeah, nice right here, and then mm -hmm. it gets thick right there? Yeah. When I wrap in here, that's going to look yucky, and that's going to look yucky. I'll get the drum one more time. Okay. <laughs> Happy with that? That looks much better. You might could go a little bit thinner to match the that thickness. Alright, just gonna re-denature alcohol with the uh, fender. We got these looking really good. Good job, Aaron. Okay. That looks much cleaner. It's like that nasty aftermarket bad quality look is more refined looking now. Nice. Okay, we just got our piece cut. We really tried to cut plenty so that we had enough to go over the edges. We were talking about this is the top of the fender and we were like, if we get this stuck beautifully, then we work out from there. It seems like a good strategy, but this fender has so many different angles and crap on it. Yeah. It's like a magnet. It oh, is. It's so crazy. Can y'all hear that static? It like zaps you too. Now this is a little bit dusty. Is that going to scratch it? I don't know. We don't slide it around a bunch of them. Hmm. Somebody told me there's a TV show called Naked and Afraid. Yes. We should have another one that's even more scary, which is wrap a car with your spouse. And whoever lives through it gets to keep the house. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm holding strong. I'm probably going to live. Oh, yeah. We're not at risk. <laughs> it's the other people. I don't know. You've had We're your good. moments where you're like about to combust. <laughs> but I didn't. But you didn't. I just took a little silent time in the corner. That's right. Make a cup of coffee and reset. That's what I've been doing. Oh, the moment. Oh, it didn't wet the floor. What's, going What's on? our plan? I mean, we were going for it. Oh. Right? Well, you, you pulled it away, so I thought we were about to stick it, but... No. Oh, okay, so um, my way a little, and let's go for it. Because it's sticking already. Okay. So, bottom down, maybe? Oh, boy. Okay. It's stuck. Oh. Okay. okay, let's flip it over and set it on the car. We'll see you out. Oh. Where all that dust came from. Oh my. Look at all of where it was. It was just like... It probably came from my shirt. Show the camera what you're going to use. This is called Rapid Tech. Found this online. And we had one guy that wraps for a living and he said, but these cars have lots of angles. Sometimes you got to use an application fluid. So we're going to try it. Which, Just it was funny because he said detail spray. And that stuff makes me think it's going to be stickier, not like give you mobility. Right. So that's a little confusing. Man, that stuff smells like candy. Mm hmm. Smells like a carnival. It's rapidly tapped. Got a fun little situation here. I'm gonna get a seat too. We're gonna check in with y'all in a minute. Well, good morning. I've been over here at the shop. Uh, we had the kid come over last night, so Emily's kind of having a lazy morning with her, which is really good. But I've been trying to fit some of this plastic and just kind of figure out some of the stuff that we're going to run into. I didn't film it, but I'm going to show you what I got done. So we got these guys fitted. This is super important because this shapes that bumper. That bumper's pliable, it's not fiberglass, so it needs structure behind it. So luckily I only found those at Friendly Chevrolet in Dallas. Went and picked them up yesterday. And then we got the back ones as well. So this will keep all the rocks out of there, finally. We're not going to have an issue with that anymore. It fits in there perfect, looks really nice. And I got them installed on both sides. I've got to deal with this because our fenders do not have provisions for this. So I'm going to have to use the Dremel and cut a square hole for those to go in it so it'll snap in place. But it's getting there. We have today and tomorrow to finish this car. Oh Lord. I'm going to work on this, this little switch right here. Because we have a problem with the high beams, which we've talked about. I don't know how to take this apart, but I'm gonna find out. I know on my old Chevy trucks, you used an Allen key to push a spring in here. So we're gonna try that. The battery is unhooked, by the way. When you go watch videos on the internet, they don't show this part. You just put Allen key in it, it just snaps out. It doesn't always work that way. But you've seen me fight long enough, so I'll show you when I get it off. All right, so what happens is put the Allen wrench in there and it's gonna be at this angle. The clip's gonna be against the steering wheel pad or horn button, whatever you wanna call it. I was going straight down and I was missing it. So if you'll just twist it a little bit, you'll start to fill it in there and then you'll feel some spring action and it comes off. See if we can get the steering wheel off. Well, that was not as tight as I would like it to be. It's only our life. And yeah, we're gonna have to have a puller. This has got little oblong holes, so we need a puller with like a hook that'll get on that. I don't know if I have it or not. Do 
Yeah, I don't want to stress that too much. Okay, off to find a puller. All right, I had to call back up. <laughs> the kid and I have been working on this fender and she's helping me a lot. This section was so crinkled up, there was so much extra material that we could not get the wrinkles out. I took the razor knife and I just cut that little section out and I'm gonna have to do a little patch panel seam deal. Not happy about that, but it's at the bottom of the fender. It's gonna be what it is. We're gonna do this little section here. Another piece to that is we hate these fenders. So we're looking for factory fenders, or at least a better quality one where the inserts will go in. Because we're down to the wire, we're like, make these suckers green. Yep. We're heading to California. When we get home, we can wait on new ones to be laid up or whatever we need to do. So exactly. just get it done at this moment. Yep, that is the truth. So I'm gonna cut this out because mm -hmm. it's gonna loop in like that. Mm -hmm. That way we're not trying to pull down and see how all it's gonna be creasy and gross. Right now it's so nice and flat. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll hold this end and then we'll try and get this smoothed down like this section. I'll try and pull it. You can heat and you can use this hand to curve it around this because it's going to go like this, this body line right here. It's yeah. going to swoop in and so right. it may try to wrinkle on you, but I'm going to hold it for you. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yep, good job. You might need to cut it a little bit more. Yeah, I hesitated because I want to be sure. Because we can stretch this with the heat. Okay. It can be stretched. Yep, and now if I let that go, you can stretch it around there. And then I'll just keep a pull on it. Oh, Get yeah. the main part stuck and then the rest it can be. That's looking really good though. I'm liking the gradual stick, that way we don't have too much stress on this since it swoops down. Because if I pull too tight, it'll want to pull away. That can be fixed with heat. I can get you the glove too, and the glove's pretty cool. Where's the glove? Oh, oh. I'm sorry, don't want to burn your face off. It's okay. <laughs> um, the glove just kind of makes it glide nicely. Finley's being very needy. Needy Finley. Oh, that's nice. Wrong hand. Right hand. <laughs> okay. That's fun. Is that so fun, kid? Yeah. So glad I could help. It's looking good. It's looking really good. Okay, I'll just keep holding it for you and you can keep gradually heating and sticking. The glove just kind of makes it slide. But it is harder to feel if there's like a bump. Yeah. I can do this to feel mm -hmm. around. But that's looking really, really nice. Yeah, dude. Satisfactory. Yeah. So, yeah, heat that and then gradually press it in and then let, hold it there while it cools. Some dust right there. <laughs> right. It's quite a bit. Redo it. Start over. <laughs> what? I want to get that better. Oh, no, I can cut it a little bit more if you want me to. I mean, if it's not, um, you probably could. Okay. We just, just want to be tiny, sure tiny, that tiny, it's tiny bit. covering it. Just like a little give. A little tiny give. Okay, that's a little bit. Wee! Don't do that. Isn't it wild? Yeah, just like wee! <laughs> hey, that looks good. It does. Yay! Come on, stay. As long as stay. stay. Okay, up here. Let's yeah. do this up here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the outlets, the inlets, whatever these are in this fender, they're so junky. They don't fit any of the ZR1, like the plastic pieces that are supposed to finish this out. Will you put some heat on this corner right here? Thank you. 
Very nice intentional gradual heat. I don't know what some tips are to keeping this stuff to stay. Haha. <laughs> no, no. I know. Try again. We could put some of that uh, adhesion promoter in there too, because it's like raw fiber. Oh, don't set this anywhere. Put okay. it down. So hey. let's go ahead and stick that this. That's pretty good. Let's put some adhesion promoter on this surface. It's like the back We're side of the fender. Under. Yeah, and then we'll smooth it down. That's gonna be nice. Well, the new switch is in. Emily got to work. She grabbed the camera. She got busy and I kept doing what I was doing. This plastic piece doesn't have any screws in it. It just kind of snaps together, so be careful. And pull that apart. It's got a seam right there. And it will expose this guy. And I'll show you how that comes off and how it unplugs and all that good stuff. All right, so this can be mounted in there just like this. You'll have one bolt right here. It's a Torx. And one right. Take those two screws out. And on the back, you've got a plug right there, two plugs right there, and this kind of goes in, kind of past the steering column a little bit, but you can get it without removing anything else. Take those out, put the new switch back in, plug it in, put those screws back in it. On the steering wheel, what I did was I took some bolts and I ground them down. I made them oblong. That was a normal bolt. I just ground two sides off of it and then shaped it until it would go in there. That's an oval hole. So once you put it down in there, you twist it and it locks in. And then I use just a normal puller, just like that. Worked pretty good though. So if you don't have the right tools, that'll work. So here's a better view. You can see all those are kind of oval shaped. This is what I created. It goes right in, then you turn it a quarter and it locks in. It's kind of a hack, but it worked for me, so there you go. We got it looking pretty decent. We've got this underneath pretty well stuck. We're going to get this patch panel done. Our clean seams, we're gonna use the wrap cut tape on those edges to make sure that we get like really nice seams. Unfortunate seams, but nice seams. And then we're gonna take the ends of the wrap and make sure it's all pretty along the inner portions because that's where the um, under the hood section is there. And then along these inner fenders, we're going to get all that smoothed out. So happy to have the kid helping me today. Yeah. Yeah. I would stick this section first while it's really super straight. It's not working. Bring that piece out. So what we do is we cut through the red part, but not the thread. The red, but not the thread. Oh, you have a problem. It's like not a surface that you would think would be very sticky. This all looks really nice. Yeah, it's not that sticky. I did a test piece. I'm gonna put some of this stuff on it. Probably trim this up to where we can get it to stick nicely. Right, kid? Yep. Seems plausible. We don't know what we're doing. No, we do not. like the sun lamp stuff. <laughs> no, it's very chemical. -y. You should probably be wearing a respirator. People are going to comment that. Child labor and exposure to harsh chemicals. I asked to do this. <laughs> <laughs> she actually asked to make TikToks and I was like, no, we have to work. No, you made a TikTok with me. 
<laughs> I love making TikToks with you. Exactly. <laughs> okay, let's get this corner. Okay. And then we're gonna work around. Yeah. Okay, you guys, we are considering this fender done. It's imperfect, but I'm willing to live with it. I hate this line here. We could not get all that material lined out. It was just so wrinkly and gross. And then there's lots of trash down in the bottom. That's closest to the bottom of the car, and I just said, oh well. Got lots of material wrapped up underneath it. So uh, we'll see how that ages, you know? This is a project Aaron has been working on. He ordered these sheets of heavy duty plastic honeycomb. And what he's doing with it is the back part to finish out these holes. It looks really, really nice. He's gonna finish it out. He's got them cut to fit. He even heated them so that they had the same curvature as the opening and he's gonna glue them in. All right, you guys, Aaron has got this fender fitment as good as he can get it right now. We've got all the like inner liner stuff that we bought at the dealership in place. And yet again, these aftermarket parts are so difficult with OEM parts because they just aren't built the same, like the mounting points and where they all, it's just frustrating. But um, Aaron is a persistent cuss and he's gonna make it work. We know this. He said it would feel better to him to have a wrap on this fender. So we are getting ready to wipe her down and say all the cuss words getting the wrap on this fender. And so I'm going to run a time lapse and we're gonna look like we do it in 30 seconds for y'all since you got to see us suffer on uh, the passenger side. Sound good? Yeah? Okay, let's do it. You know what guys, I've got the duct tape out and oh, <laughs> Aaron had to turn the camera on and that's just accurate, you know. You guys need to know what's happening. Um, the inlays, well not the inlays, but the um, back part of these vents, it was so hard to get the little bits of vinyl that has to wrap around to stick because, well, we know the inside of these fenders is that raw fiberglass. So <laughs> I went and got some duct tape and I'm tacking the duct tape to the end of my vinyl and I'm warming it and then I'm pulling it and the duct tape is seeming to stick on the backside of these fenders. So that's what I'm doing. I can't say I'm proud of myself, but I can't get in here to get that um, adhesion promoter, you know, on the back side of this fender because it's already mounted. All that to say, <clears throat> let's do this. Mom has been assisting me and she's amazing, but we all know that anyway. <laughs> also, um, daylight saving time makes it feel like it's so late. The time change? I knew it was not That's not daylight it's saving time. Yeah, it felt like it was like nine o'clock and it's 7 30. I don't have an excuse to be tired. Okay you guys <laughs> because we have mom here we have an extra two pair of hands we're gonna try this hood. It's a little risky because it's the evening and we're kind of tired so it's kind of like if it doesn't go on easy at first we're just gonna walk away and then restart in the morning but um, we are gonna spray it down with that rapid tack stuff that's supposed to leave it um, a little movie groovy until you get it where you want it. So uh, that's what we're gonna try and do. We're wiping it down with denatric alcohol. Well, aaron has got the tack cloth now, so we're onto that, so yeah. If you're a praying type of person, say a prayer for us.
checking in with you. It literally is six hours later. <laughs> okay, maybe not six hours, but it's felt like six hours and the hood's not even done yet. But we will not be beaten. We've been massaging these little bubbles in this hood. Uh, can we see them? Yes. Oh boy, can you? Um, so we believe that that wrap attack, the moisture that we sprayed on the hood, um, while it, it did prove to be beneficial in like not making it stick immediately, these, if they were air bubbles, they would be gone by now. They just push around. So um, Aaron said we may wait till tomorrow to try and continue to massage them out. But man, I just have like apprehension about that because I know the, the few that I have gotten out, you can see glue lines where the bubble was. So I don't know, I just hate leaving them. But at the same time, what we're doing isn't really helping. It's just kind of pushing them around. So we got this section of the hood done though. Um, it has glue lines. It is imperfect, but we got it. <laughs> but this is the stuff we deal with with this stuff. It's like, look at that. Look at the how much product there is there. And it's so difficult to try and get it to lay evenly. Pretty much just inch by inch maybe maybe four inches at a time we heat it and then pull it and then press it down and that's just really tough so um yeah is that correct yeah sounds right so it's requiring a lot of patience and tenacity but we are gonna make it happen and we've got mom here i would say that we're on better behavior with her here but <laughs> That would be inaccurate. <laughs> I'm just still playing with these bubbles. Yeah. They just kind of roll around. But we're getting some of them out. Okay. <laughs> we were looking at that section that was all ugh, crazy. Um, and Aaron was like, well, I'm done for the night. I'm going to leave that and think about it unless you want to tackle it. So I tackled it. Now, there is glue lines and all this junk that I, that I don't love when I look closely, but it's on the hood. It's tacked down. It's solid. It's done. Now, do you want to see up close? No. See all the little, little bubbles? Got to press all those out. But see, when I say glue lines, see what I mean there? Yuck. Yuck. We've still got to pull the edge of the wrap down around the hood but that is gross now normal people looking at the car they're not gonna see that it's just us and those of you who see this car in person and want to look closely at our work <laughs> y'all this car is getting greener and greener <laughs> this whole side of the car is green in fact the bumper is gonna be a joy I'm sure oh, yeah. just pure happiness pretty much like a walk in the park a walk in the park i mean yeah. it is kind of looks like a park green trees green grass <laughs> <laughs> so last day to work on it is tomorrow so yeah. we're gonna have to get it done yep it's gonna be awesome finley is ready to go to bed he's where are you going you got a hit <laughs> yep. We're gonna hang it up for the night. We'll see y'all in the morning. <sighs> it's a new day and it's time to get this car completely green. <laughs> Why'd you put the camera on me? Well, <laughs> I'm just drinking coffee. I know. I was expecting I, that. I wanted to shoot an intro and I didn't want to make you get up. So I came over here. But I was just, you can keep working or whatever. Or are you on Facebook Marketplace? <laughs> I was looking for projects that I don't need. <laughs> well, um, on our drive here this morning, we made a plan for uh, at least the first job, first portion of the job, 
and that is to put the car on the lift so that we can do the front bumper and have it be like chest height when we're on our chairs. I want to sit down and also I want to get it away from the dust. I want to attack the bumper first because I don't know if you guys are like me. Emily doesn't seem to be this way, but this is the case with me. I start out with a certain amount of um, potential happiness <laughs> and then <laughs> as the evening drops off it becomes way harder for me to continue to be nice doing difficult stuff so so I think get that hard part done then we can start working on like changing the wheels and tires and more mundane stuff that's not so challenging we're gonna do the bumper first plan one put her on the lift okay the car is on the lift because this fender is already installed I finished out these corners and got that except for that part. I'm gonna do that in a little while. Up underneath the inside of this, I used duct tape because I really wanted it to stay. <laughs> That's what I did. Aaron just said that he measured how much we need for the bumper and this roll is not quite enough. We have just a little bit left on this roll. So I'm really glad we bought that second roll. So we'll use this last bit for the inlays. So we've got to do an inlay between each of these fog lights and then one that goes along the bottom portion of the bumper. So Aaron's already getting our wrap cut tape in place. And we're going to get those inlays done with this last little piece and then pull the new roll out for the bumper. We could have done the whole car with one roll, one 60 foot roll. This was a five foot by 60 foot roll and it was $700. The brand is Esmo and we got it on eBay. I mean, Amazon. And to be quite honest, it has been very difficult to install. We've talked to a handful of folks that are professional wrappers that say that stuff's not impossible to install, but it's not the easiest. You guys started with a very difficult wrap to install. So if you're considering wrapping a vehicle, be sure that you get a wrap. Maybe read the reviews. I don't know if we even read the reviews on this, um, but uh, we have heard that Avery Denison, 3M, Vivid, those wraps are easier to install. And in fact, we did purchase a sample, this little sample roll of Vivid wrap and we played with it on the bumper and it did install incredibly different than this stuff. So yeah, this has been a struggle installing this stuff, but it's been a good learning lesson, learning opportunity. Um, and as y'all know, we show our mistakes and our struggles and this one was definitely a struggle. There was a lot of difficulty with the way this installed, so we're really excited to have it done. So off we go for these inlays and then the final big piece for the bumper. Erin did a really good job artfully applying this wrap cut tape. Instead of doing like a straight line, I like the way he angled it with the curvature of the bumper. Okay, so we've worked this pretty well. I was trying to uh, get the shot for you guys, but I end up covering the shot because I'm right over where I'm working. So hopefully y'all can see us do this section. This is obviously very crinkly because it's like this, the nature of the curves. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's how we've experienced it. Professional wrappers may have a different um, way of doing it and they may not deal with the same 
opportunities, issues, problems, whatever. But um, we're gonna try and get this smoothed out. We've got our tape right here, so I'm, I'm only going to the tape. I'm gonna smooth it over the tape so that we can easily pull that tape off. Yeah, so we'll keep on going this direction and then we'll get over to this corner. It's done before we know it. We're doing it, handsome. That's right. Mmm. I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like it either. Because <laughs> you know how strong I am? Yeah. Pull it out. Right there. Yes, sir. You definitely tell we didn't wet sand it. That texture. Yep. Yeah, we decided not to wet sand this bumper. We thought we were going to do like 800,000 grit, get it really super smooth because it's got the texture of like OEM plastic. It's yeah. not, it's not rough, rough. It looks great. It has orange peel on it. But, um, but then we started thinking about it and we were like, it's the front of the car. It's going to get rock As chips. much it's as gonna... we're going to have to stretch this material to get around all these angles and the potential for dust in it, like the texture is the least of our worries. Yeah. And I have committed myself to when I get home replacing these fenders because I really want the zero one inserts to fit. This one they don't. I don't like the fenders. So I know when we get back home, once the fenders get laid up or we find them, we're going to be changing the front of this car up. So right now we're down to the wire and let's just get some wrap on it. Another element that I just thought of is if this wrap was laying like glassy paint, yeah, like without the blue lines and the areas where it's got trash in it. Like if it were laying beautifully, we probably would have sanded this down because the whole yeah. rest of the car would be glassy. I, I can already tell you right now because of my personality, as soon as our 57 is painted, this is probably going to the paint booth. I mean, this wrap is gonna run us for a year or two and then I'm gonna to wanna to paint the car. Yeah. So. I mean, and that's how we do. Like we keep cars for so long, they're family members, yep. they evolve, yep. and this one will too. Yep. They evolve just like us. Yeah, that's right. And get better. Get better and better. Get stories and adventures under their belt, yep. learn stuff. Yeah, just like good leather. <laughs> yeah. About time to pull some wrap, cut, tape. That's right. He just pulled his floss part out. And there's the red part. That'd be looking nice. Cool. That's green. <laughs> we just did these little inlays on the inside of this portion of the grill. We're thinking that we can do this underside with the big sheet. So we're gonna go for that, but we decided to get that in there so that we didn't have to worry about stretching it that far in. We've avoided the big piece as long as we can. <laughs> I think so too. Now it's time to get that done so we can finish the whole rest of the car. Which what do we have to do the whole rest of the car? Interior, oh. headlights. Oh. I gotta make all the trim fit, all the inner liners. Wheels and tires, check trans fluid, rear fluid. Oh, we gotta put a radiator in it and a course port. Yeah, okay. Got our tape down for our inlay to be perfect and beautiful. And it is time for the big piece.
It's only been a full day. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my goodness. It's, it's been a full day of this bumper. We started it like before noon and it's probably, I don't know what time it is, 7 p.m. maybe. <laughs> We haven't touched the core support. Aaron did have to walk away from the bumper for a while and he got a bunch of work done here on the back of the car. He got these finished pieces in. He got these pieces in. So that was awesome. But yes, good stuff. <laughs> we'll relieve tomorrow for BRI. I decided to roll video on this headlight install because we did the last one without the cameras and man, there were sparks flying, but not the good kind. This is difficult. It doesn't help that these headlights are like so expensive and you don't want to hurt them and then you don't want to hurt the fender that you wrap so nicely-ish. Quite a challenge. About to rotate. Mm -hmm. These headlights are beautiful and they mm -hmm. look really pretty with these smoked marker lights too. Woo! Gorgeous. Wow. Yeah, the fog lights look wonderful. The grill is in. This means we're getting close. That look pretty good. It does. I got a thing missing over here, so I gotta like center it by eyeball. Next time that comes up, it's bringing wrap with it. That looks pretty, Aaron. Yeah. Perfect. We're gonna start with the radiator going back in. It's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. Right, Aaron? Oh yeah. Do we need to remove any of these zip ties on the... Sorry. That would be a no in. And then the condenser just clicks into yeah, those things I'll get right all there. That hooked up. Okay. Yep. I guess I'm going over to the door jam. Okay, okay. Yay. I'm to jam out. So I was gonna go to the door jams, but then Aaron was like, actually, since it's on the lift, let's check the undercarriage, like the all the fluids underneath there, um, check bolts, all that good stuff. And I did realize that it's very difficult to get the door open with the lift. So um, we're going to lift it up, get underneath there, check all the things, make sure she's ready to hit the road. And then we will put the wheels and tires on and get off the lift so that I can get the doors open to finish the jams. So that may be tomorrow, but right now we're gonna lift it up. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, okay, doing it. I'm gonna check this rear diff fluid first. I've got my socket on my ratchet. Looks like Aaron's working on wiring those fog lights or headlights or something yeah. there. Okay. Well, I gotta get a cheater. Bigger tools. Makes me feel good that he just didn't break it loose, just easy peasy. Fuck. Okay. Success feels good. Hopefully, fluid doesn't come pouring out, or hopefully, it does. And it's full. Okay. Okay. It's got fluid in it. Sweet. Sorry, I hijacked you, Aaron. I can do that. Right. Bigger tools. There you go. It's loose. <laughs> Thank you. I hijacked you. Yep. Yeah. In my job title. Yep. It, uh, you've bought a shirt recently that totally fits that. Let me stop what I'm doing to fix your problem. Did y'all see him buy that? y'all see him buy that shirt on Amazon the other day? When we were working on Abby's Jeep. He's like, I got a really good fitting shirt for me. Stop what I'm doing and fix your problems. <laughs> Accurate. Oh, yep. Are we in it? 
started coming out. Yes. When we did this um, transmission build, we filled it up with Kindle transmission fluid and Kindle rear end fluid. So it's good that we haven't lost any. I'm not going to get it as tight this time. That seemed a little excessive, did it not? Yeah, it was a little bit much. Right, it hasn't been that long since we had the cradle down in this car from doing the transmission rebuild, so it is good to have her up in the air and check everything that we did and put eyes on everything else. But we put a new exhaust on it. It had a really hacked exhaust on it, and now it's got a Hooker Blackheart, really awesome kit. All the things that were wrong with this car are becoming less wrong and more right. So that's awesome. Okay, so I was just over at the toolbox getting ready to find sockets to tighten stuff and um, make sure it's all torqued. And I was just like staring at the tools. And Aaron was like, you're tired too. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I think we're gonna call it a night. We're gonna call it a night and go home and get some rest and then see y'all back here in the morning. It will be Sunday. It will be our last day to finish the car, but we're really freaking close. I mean, door jams are not necessary to drive across the country. There are a couple of things that are, that we need to do, but not, not that much. Our list is not great. Um, so that's really good news. We're tired. We're gonna go sack out for the night. Gotta do laundry, get ready and pack, so. Um, yeah, we will see y'all tomorrow. Day night. Well, happy Sunday. <laughs> it's a new day in the shop and our final day in the shop to finish this car. Um, we were barely able to go to sleep last night, just mulling over our list. But we did get good rest and we're here today and Aaron's already working. I have turned lights on and all that good stuff and this is our intro and we're just gonna hit the ground running. I'm gonna start with torquing bolts and making sure everything's tight in the rear cradle and suspension. And then hopefully he'll have plastic installed up front and we can lower the car down. Um, we're just gonna start banging work out. But I don't know if you've noticed, but this is our ugly Christmas sweater for Falling Sparks Garage. It's got the C30 camper on it. I am obsessed. I think it's awesome. We have a deadline for you guys to buy these. It's all the um, information is going to be down in the description of the video, but please go grab one. We ordered a big order and we'd love to sell them so that we can do new ones for next year. These are really fun. They're a really snuggly sweater, but the print itself looks like a knit, you know? It's really cool. We would love to see these on y'all and would really appreciate the support. And of course, like we've got gear like hats. And we have stickers now and cute keychains, not cute, but cool ones. The um, hang tag, like aviation hang tag ones. And they say, please start. <laughs> They're really fun. So y'all go check out the website. We've got a Roxy shirt, a Garfield shirt, and a Dot Zen shirt also. And also Flying Sparks Garage logo shirt. So we would really appreciate the support. And yeah, would love to see these uh, Christmas sweaters on y'all. All right, less words, more work. That one's tight. That one too. Yep, she's tight. This one, looking good, y'all. This is something Aaron was not happy about having to do. No. These pieces were not cheap, but they did not fit with the fenders. Oh, well. They were sticking out a whole bunch. Look, they don't even align. We're having to say goodbye to some of this inner material so that they suck in there properly. <laughs> Front and rear. But, make it work. Aaron was just like, okay, let's test the headlights. And I just got to see them, and I want you all to see them, because holy cow. They are so gorgeous. So that's headlights on. 
And now give us the running lights. Oh, I'm gonna give you blinkers. Okay, blinkers. Now that one's blinking fast because the tail lights are out, right? Yep. Yeah, it's so crazy. Those blinkers are so cool. Okay, oh, and those are running lights. Wow. Those headlights are gorgeous. They work, babe. Nice. So those headlights are from Vet Lights. Yep. If you're a Corvette guy and you want those Vet Lights. They are pricey. They were very pricey. Oh, like two grand. Yep. No, I don't think they were bought that much, but for the headlights and the fog lights, that kit was, it was spendy. Mm. But, it's cheaper than a new Corvette. <laughs> they look really pretty. Cool. Check that off your list, Aaron. Yep. These new tires look really good. Nice to see good quality, fresh tires on this thing. Got us some pretty Contis. Getting it done over here, slowly but surely. It's getting more green. <laughs> Finley's resting, resting up. It's green. About time for that little door sill sticker and get that in place and this is done. Okay, mom's out here soaking up time with her kids yep. before they leave and go cross country. Because I can't fit in there. Because you can't fit in the Corvette. Dang it. Finley, you can't even fit in there. I had a hand, but. Buddy, I'm gonna miss you. Uh, Yours screws don't pull them on at speed. Yeah. He's trying to get up there with you. He says, Are we, is this where we're sleeping? It feels like it should be, huh, bud? <laughs> See, I told you that. He kept, he kept making his leg try to go up. Oh, bud. Fascia is on and bolted up and secure. And we've already started on the next mission. Tinting our taillights. It is a really not enjoyable job, but it's it's wrapping and it's just we're over wrapping. It's the season to, to wrap. Exactly. We had made a post on the socials about tinted taillights versus not because it literally looks like Christmas from the back from the back of the car with the green and the bright red. These taillights are just like so bright red and vibrant. We do understand and agree with a lot of the people's perspective that they are somewhat dangerous because they're not as bright as uh, regular red taillights. But the way that we look at it is these are already really bright and the Corvette has these big red shining globes at you from the back of the car. Mom's nodding, so it's mom approved, so. <laughs> Well, and you tried to get a medium, more of a medium tint, but yeah. it was pretty much the same as the dark, so. Yeah. And the light was not good because it looked like it was purple. 
So yep. here we are. <clears throat> yeah, we've ordered three we different. Can't have a Christmas tree looking thing back there. Oh my god, it's so yeah. so yeah. red and green. Um, yeah, we ordered this tent from Vivid, and um, yeah, first we ordered extra dark, and it was super dark. Then we ordered light, and it was barely anything, and had a purple hue to it. Then we got just dark. That's what we are using now. Dicky Sullivan. Very, Okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. These are requiring heat as well. It's like oh, we, we, we feel like they should just they lay down flat, but they're, uh, they're concaved, so. Still has to. The catch is right in the middle, but that's it. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold tight on this, and you do the stretching, okay? You can do the stretching right there. Pull it. I don't want this thing to That's fly out of my lap. Beautiful. <laughs> that looks nice there. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy, one of us has to have a hold of this <laughs> light because we're just gonna throw. We're gonna both grab real tight, and then we're just gonna sling it across the room. Okay. <laughs> Oh. I don't know how y'all you have to dream about wrapping it night. Oh my god, I had the because I didn't even want to tell y'all this, but since the camera's rolling and I ha I meant to tell you this, Mom. Uh the night that we slept in the hotel at PRI. Yes. Um I woke up from a dream that I could not believe. Oh, uh, in my dream I was literally putting wrap cut I was trying to figure out how to wrap my face and I was like oh now my. if I go here it's not gonna stick to my chin so I need to do a seam along my jawline and oh. I was like thinking about the wrap cut along my jawline that's how oh. messed up my brain is from this wrap oh I woke up and I was like what what are you even thinking Emily that makes no sense and then I'm like well your brain your brain's, your brain's a, little, trying to a little fried and can mm -hmm. only think about like seams and how things aren't gonna work in angles. I literally had that dream. It's so stupid. Weird is it? It was your own face. Like it's. Like I know. Your, like, it's like my identity. It was yes, that that's important. what I'm trying to say. It's like your. It's, There's deeper meaning there. I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. probably like my my fear of being judged and all that. Of like, yes. God, you just really put yourself on blast with how bad that job was and how awful. Like, everybody saw your face in pain or something. Who knows? I don't know. <sighs> Last one. It's <gasps> mom. I love her. You sure you want to wrap Dandy? <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all. I, I look out there and I love her whatever color she is. Yeah. But I if really she do. Was green. I know. Well, maybe when, like Aaron said, maybe when I forget a little bit about right. how this was. When the burns heal. Yeah. The burns <sighs> under here. I had to wear. It. Mom went to a Christmas gala last night. She was getting ready to say that. I had to wear a dress. <laughs> I had but to wear a dress. She stopped herself. With my arms showing, and people are like, "What's that right. on your arm?" Under oh, here. well, I was helping my daughter with her wrap on her Corvette. Don't look at that. that. Don't look burn. at that. Burn. Here's our sample. Oh yeah. See that? Dude. That looks great. They're still really bright. What? <laughs> What's up with that? I don't know. I gotta figure that one out. Usually ground is you. Those are plenty bright. People will be able to see those. Oh, most definitely. And it's bright in here, so once they light up outside. Yep. And then, of course, in the daytime, like this is it what looks it'll nice. look like in the daytime. Yeah, because otherwise it looked. Yeah. They just were so bright red. Yeah, I like them. Me too. I'm glad you approved, mother. <laughs> Glad you approve. I do. Looks so nice. Mm -hmm. It does. Okay, Aaron is working on the cold air intake that needs to be replaced eventually, but it will do for this trip. I'm going to add some coolant into this thing because we had the whole cooling system apart, as you all know. So, of course, we're going back with some peak. I absolutely love working with peak they have been one of our best partners they are truly enthusiasts the main big boss guy is a racer and he's just amazing so 
I love them and it doesn't suck that their coolant is awesome. So, love it. Good stuff. Now let's see if I can not spill it. Get, just get, just get one, Emily. Just get yourself a funnel. Now I'm smart. Here it going through the system. I'm going with 50-50 because I like the pre-diluted stuff. That way I don't have to worry about ratios. <laughs> I know it's like, why are you paying for half a jug of water? Well, because I don't want to have to worry about ratios. I just want to dump it in. I like that they offer both. If you want concentrate, you can get it. You don't want to worry about ratios? Grab 50-50. Hey y'all, so I'm not in our shop right now. I'm actually uh, like about a week down the road from when you're gonna be seeing this video. Um, and you're gonna have to stay tuned to see what we're doing here because wow. Um, <laughs> but this episode is gonna wrap here, <laughs> wrap. Yeah, thankfully that's done. Holy cow. Um, thank you all for watching a long episode. I hope you enjoyed it. That wrap was so much work. In the future, I believe we will be painting things, but we can check this off the list that we learned something. And learning on a Corvette with a high adhesion wrap was really intense. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed it though. We are leaving off on an adventure in the morning, so you um, we'll be getting lots of episodes. We head out to California. We do this awesome event, which you will learn more about in an upcoming episode. And we have a great drive out to the West Coast. So power tour is happening, all the good stuff. Thank you all so much for watching. Huge shout out to Adrian for hustling on these edits for y'all. And we'll see you on the next episode.